Aren't you thankful for good music? Aren't you thankful for good music? I love that. How many of you, when you sing, man, you just feel connected to God? How many of you know what I'm talking about? Maybe you're here and you're like, man, I'm not sure about this stuff. I, I'm not sure if I subscribe to the words, you know, that are up on the screen. I'm just kind of disconnected from that. I get that. But I think it's a good thing to wrestle with the tension, you know, sometimes. And, and uh, the words that are up there, maybe you're not there yet. Maybe you're just not there yet. It's okay. Uh, what we know as Jesus followers is, man, when we, when we worship God, when we praise God, um, God's presence is here. And when God's presence is anywhere, anything can happen. And I love that. I love that. I love that. So today I'm just thankful. I, I'm truly thankful for great music. Uh, I'm thankful for a great production team, our all access team in Navarre, here in Gulf Breeze, even guys at Blackwater, because uh, we, we, we can't do this without you guys. So I want to say thank you to everybody. It's amazing, and we are blessed. I want you to turn to someone before you sit down, turn to someone and say, hey, I'm, I'm glad you made it today. Tell them, I'm glad you made it today. All right, all right, that's good. Good stuff. Thank you guys. Great job. Great job. Awesome. Well, I'm super, I am super excited to, to uh, jump into a series with you guys. Last week, um, Ray spoke. Ray did a great job, didn't he? he? Did a great job. And I like giving some of some of the guys on our team, like giving them a giving them an opportunity. God's given them gifts, and uh, it's good in developing them. It's it's good to take a breather. Sometimes it's good to be preached to, you know, not preached at, but be preached to. It's good to be on the front row and, and uh, bring the energy that I, I ask those guys to bring when I preach. And so it's just so many good things come out of it. Um, last week was a standalone. It was a standalone. Sometimes we'll do standalones. We'll pick a, a topic and we'll just preach. Uh, we'll, we'll bring a message on this one thing and, and it might be a, a week. And then other times we do what we call series. So if you're new to Momentum... Um, a series is just a topic that we choose, and then we're going to talk about it. We're going to discuss it anywhere from three to maybe even six weeks. And um, I want to encourage you, in this new series that we're starting, it's complicated. I want to encourage you to come. In fact, really, that's my challenge for you. That's the one thing we all can do. We can all take that step to say, you know what, I'm going to be committed to come. Because I don't want you to miss this. And I, I get it. if you're a business person, you travel, travel I travel, um, and I, I get that. I totally get that. But man, if you can make it, uh, be here. Don't leave it up to chance. Don't leave it up to your feelings. You know what I'm saying? The, the devil will exploit that. Don't leave it up to, make it a non-negotiable. That man, I'm going to come for this series. Because here's what I know. All of us have a common denominator so all of us are going to be spoken to in this series. You know why? Because all of us struggle with relationship. Isn't that true? Yeah. So uh, we had so much fun last gathering. I, I, it, it was just great. We had a great time. And, and I hope today, like seriously, at the end of today, my, my goal in this introduction, that's what this is. You ever read a book and you start with the introduction, the introduction in the book, but it kind of introduces the book. This will be an introduction to this series. So if you're like, well, he didn't go deep enough or he didn't answer my questions or he didn't address this, or it's an introduction. It's just an introduction. And, and my goal and my prayer is that you will come back, not just one other week in this series, but that you'll come back every week in the series. Because I promise you, we all need it. Everybody in here needs it. Relationships. You ever been online and then somebody's status changed? You know, and their status changes, you know. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, my goodness, what's going on? What, what's happening there? And uh, that's, that's, that's kind of what we're going to talk about. Because in relationships, um, from time to time, and the status changes. And if you're here today and you're in eighth grade, you're in eighth grade and you're like, I'm in love. <laughs> she checked the box, yes, and I'm just so madly in love. Or maybe you're in high school and you're like, oh, yeah, oh, we are definitely getting married. We've been going together now. 
for two months. <laughs> Not one, but two. We are so a thing. Never felt a love like this before. You're like, that's great. I'm happy for you. Or, or if you're dating, you are dating and you are just so in love. He has no, I mean, he is Mr. Wonderful. She's Miss Perfect. And you're like, I know we're just meant to be because you are what I deserve. I mean, what I've been looking for. Um, and you're like, you are just perfect, and there's nothing wrong about you. You are absolutely perfect. Sometimes um, in, uh, in premarital counseling, the couples will say that. There's nothing wrong with her. And I just kind of laugh. You know, there's nothing wrong with him. And I was just like, <laughs> that's a pipe dream. Y'all know what I'm talking about. See, the people laughing are married. They're married. I say miserable. I said they're married. I said they're, 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 they're married. And they know. They know that. They know that we go through these different stages and phases. And, and so maybe you're here and you're engaged and you're like, oh, my goodness, I can't believe. Like, we're getting married in just a few months. It's, it's like finally here. Or maybe you're on the other side of that. You're a newlywed. You're newlywed. And uh, you're like, I cannot believe how fast that went. I mean, we were wrestling with the wedding and the details. And we were stressing and, uh, cuss I mean, fussing, and we were just, we were just really struggling with all, everything going in, and here it is, man, it's, it's over, it's done, and now we got the pictures on the wall, but maybe you find yourself, and you're kind of fussing down the hall a little bit, you know, and you're, you just, all of a sudden, you're, you're wondering if the honeymoon's over, or maybe you're here, and you've been married for 10 years, and if God was the co-host, and God was the co-host, and it was kind of like the family feud, you know, it was like the family feud, you know, and God said to you, husband and wife were there, and God said, we asked 100 couples, we surveyed 100 couples and asked them this question. We asked them on a scale of 1 to 10, how good is your marriage? And you both, you both kind of hit, hit it, you know, to answer it, you know, and, and, and the husband says, eight, you know, and the wife's like, four, you know, um, on our staff. On our staff, I'll ask our staff. We, we do a monthly um, questionnaire, and it just kind of helps me shepherd them, shepherd their heart and care for them and know how to pray for them. And I ask some hard questions on there, like, like what's the relationship with you and God like on a scale of 1 to 10? 10 being good, 1 being not so, where are you at? What's the, your relationship with your spouse? What's your relationship with your children? If you don't have children, what's your relationship with your siblings? Well, I ask those questions to see where we're at and whether we've done that or maybe even with a core team at a time or two. It's funny because what I noticed is, or maybe it's just our staff and, and, and spouses, what I've noticed is the husbands will always answer higher and the wives always answer lower. The guy's like, I'm getting an eight. I know it. You know, and she's like, you know, he's, he's thinking our marriage is wonderful. It's an eight, maybe a few things, but man, argh, you know, and she's like, we're in trouble. We're a three. <laughs> oh, I'm going into depression just thinking about it. You know, all these things need to change. And uh, or, or maybe God would ask the question, you know, and God would say, we asked, we surveyed 100 couples and we asked them this question. You know, we asked them this question. What's the one word to describe your marriage? And they both hit the to answer, you know, and, and all of a sudden, you know, he says exciting and she says boring. Or she says exciting and he says boring. And so maybe you're here and you're past that. You've been married not for a decade, but for decades. And, and the truth is, the truth is, y'all been together so long, you're on the same page, like you can think of the same things and you know what the other person's gonna say. You're an empty nester, you're at this stage in your life. And uh, you're wondering, where did it go? And how did our kids get grown up so fast? And, and maybe you're trying to do it better by doing it different with your grandkids than you did with your children. And at the end of all of this is the one word, relationship. And we all struggle in the area of relationship. We do. I mean, there are relation slips sometimes. Sometimes there's relation shifts Sometimes you step in relation shoey, <laughs> and you're like, I smell something. And if you're not careful, what you stepped into will follow you if you don't clean it. Are you with me? You've been in a vehicle with someone. <laughs> You've been in a vehicle with somebody, and you knew someone had dog crap on their shoe. You knew it. 
How'd you know it? Because you smelled it before, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you're like, man, I wonder who it is. And then you realize it's you. You're like, oh, oh my goodness. That, that's happened to me before. Sometimes in relationships, that's what happens. Like we, we're looking for the right person, the right. We just know if we can find the right person, all this other stuff will go away. And so we're looking, you know, we want to live that happily ever after where everything is a fairy tale. And um, if we're not careful, um, we compare. We compare with others. I mean, thank God for social media. We've never felt so bad about ourselves. <laughs> We've never struggled with jealousy so much or envy. That is true. That's right. That's it, right? And so we compare and we think if I was just married to her, she would make me happy. And she thinks if I, was just, if I just had him, he would listen. And boundaries are crossed and sex is abused. And we end up being so confused in this area of relationship. The truth is we've all had good relationships and we've had bad ones. And what I want for you is what God wants for you. And that is this. I want you, no matter if you're in middle school and you think you're in love, or if you've been married for 50 years and now you understand what love really is, I just believe this series is going to connect with you because we have the same common denominator, and that is we all struggle in this area of relationship. And, and my heart is really for you to see God's heart in this area of relationship, that we were made for this. We're made for this. And, and we all kind of struggle from time to time. Maybe, maybe you're here and you're sitting beside your son or daughter, or you're sitting, sitting here today and you're sitting beside your parent. And there's a little tension right now. There's a little tension in that relationship, that dynamic. And uh, so this series has everything to do with that. God made you. Like, did you know this? Like, here's the question for the message today. Did you know that God, like, did you realize this, that God made you? God literally created you for a relationship. He did. God doesn't want you to be alone. God doesn't want you to be a silo. God doesn't want you to be an island unto yourself. We are human beings. We have a soul. We're more than human doings that just get stuff done. We're actually human beings with a soul. And we're going to look to a great book. In fact, it's the first book in, in the scriptures. It's the book of Genesis. And Moses was the one entrusted to write this. As God spoke to him, he penned the words. And, uh, and so this is the first of five books that, that Moses wrote. You'll hear this um, often called as the books of Moses, um, the, the Torah. This is, this is Moses, and, and he's penning these words to us. And I, I think we can just all capture something so good today, we can walk away and it will be helpful and it will be better. So again, real quick recap. Today is week one of a series, a five-week series that we're going to be in. It's called It's Complicated and we're going to unpack this over the next couple weeks. So, so what do I want for you to do? I want you to come back. I want you to be here next week and the next week. In the next week, you see, in the American church right now, this is the real deal. In American church, what happens is people come to church, it's a parade. You know, parade, some of y'all are just there, right, at the parade. And you're, you're there, you know, and that's cool. You're at the parade, and it's fun, you're having a good time, you know, and, and a new float comes by, and the next float comes by. I kind of feel that way as a pastor. I do. People are parades. They come, six months later, you see them. Eight months later, you see them. Three years later, and they've walked through hell, sometimes alone, and you see them. And, and that's one of the hardest things. I'm not asking for your sympathy. I'm just trying to connect with you and just be real. That's one of the hardest things that I do. One of the hardest things I do is I get called sometimes to come um, put out a fire, but the problem is the house is already burned down. And I can't tell you how many times I've been in a room where the one spouse told the other spouse they were cheating I can't tell you how many times I've been there where, where a man who is totally manly, this is a man's man, but he is shattered. He's broken to pieces because his pride was here. 
and his care was here for his spouse or for his children, for his family. And, and he once thought he was invincible, and now all of a sudden he doesn't think he can go on, and, and, and it seems to just be a nightmare. I, I, that, that's so hard for me to, to get the call when it's too late. And so if there's a series where I can just kind of sit down, and it's not going to be such a heavy preach. I love to preach. God called me to preach, but I love to teach too. This series is going to kind of be a more conversational teaching, just kind of, kind of more sitting down. Um, not that I'm not going to preach a point from here or there. Not that I'm not going to get fired up. I'm not making that promise. You know me. But um, this, this is going to be more of a, a conversation and a teaching because I've seen too many relationships go off the grid. And, and the problem is they, they keep the secrets until they're shattered. When they're shattered, the secrets just, they're willing to do anything. They're willing to say anything. They're willing to humble themselves. They'll do anything to get their wife back, to get their kids back, to get the respect back. Who cares about the house anymore? And all of a sudden, the boat isn't that cool. It's, it's like the relationships. Are you with me? I did a funeral this week. I was in Knoxville, Tennessee, and I did, I did a funeral this week. It was celebration of life is what it was. And it just reminded me as I was flying to Knoxville, it reminded me that when, when people are dying, the thing they care about the most is relationships. It does. That's what they care about. They care about relationships. They want the people they love the most to be there with them. And, and, and it's not about the things that look so bright. You know, all the lights, you know, the, the things that, there's nothing wrong with it, but sometimes we just chase rabbits we think if I could just buy this, if I could just own this, if we could just get in this, or if I could get my business to this, and we're always looking to that next thing to satisfy us, and, and what happens is we get there and we're still left unsatisfied, and we miss it, and it, before we know it, we blink, and our life is just a wake of broken, shattered, messy complicated relationships. If y'all would pray for me, I appreciate it. I coughed all night, <clears throat> and the devil's not going to stop me. <laughs> so we're going to get through this. <clears throat> let's go to Genesis. Can we do that? Let's, let's go to Genesis 1 is where we're at. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 1. And we're going to just, I just want to lay a foundation. Some of you already heard this, and, and yet... You know, it's kind of like having medicine and not taking it. It's kind of like going to the doctor but not doing what the doctor says. You know, it's kind of like having an idea of a diet <laughs> but not following. You see what I'm saying? So some of us know this story, and this isn't necessarily going to be new information. It's just what we do with this information. So here we are. Relationships. And I want you to have great relationships because God wants you to have great relationships. So let's jump into Genesis. Let's look how relationships came about. Here we go. Genesis 1, verse 26. Then God said, let us, someone say us, make human beings in our, someone say our, image to be like us. Someone say us. In that first line of scripture, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, we unpack what all through the scripture God tries to explain to us. And this is a, it's a biblical mystery, if you please. It, it's something greater than we are. It's something bigger than us. If we could wrap our arms around it, if we could have a handle or a real grasp on it, you know, it might mean that we're in heaven. But, but this is called the Trinity. And that is that God is three different people, but God is one. I don't get it. I really don't. And I've gone to Bible college and studied theology. I've taken Greek. And, and I don't totally grasp this, if I can just be honest with you. But for me, humanly speaking, I've got three names. My name is Timothy, which means honoring God. Jason, which means healer. 
and pain, which means pain. <laughs> and it's P-A-Y-N-E, not P-A-I-N. And so growing up as a kid, you know, my mom, my birth mother wanted me to be called Timothy. Uh, growing up, I was called Tim. Someone called me Timmy. They didn't get a Christmas card. I knew I was in trouble when mom said, Timothy Jason, you know, when your mama calls your first and middle name, oh, it's about ready to get real. It, but th So I got three different names, but I'm one person. I'm, I'm Timothy, and I'm Jason, and I'm, I'm pain. My dad was a pastor. He still is, but dad, a pastor in church growing up, churches, and, and they would call him Pastor Pain, you know, and I thought, I don't know. I want to be called Pastor Pain. You want to come to my church? My pastor is Pastor Payne, you know. And, uh, you know, I was like, call me Tim, man. Just, just come. But, uh, you know, that's like a dentist, you know. <laughs> I don't want to go to Dr. Payne as a dentist. You know, I don't I want to pass on that one. But uh, so I'm thinking about this, this Trinity thing, and it's, it's like a triangle. There, there are three points. There are three sides. There are three angles. There's three different persons to God, yet God is one. And, 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 and God doesn't have a body like we do. You with me? God is a spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's right. And so, but, but if I can just tell you, God right there, Genesis 1, unpacks a load. Like this is deep real quick. And so here's what's going down. If I can, if I can break it down, make it easy. God the Father sitting there, God the Son sitting there, God the Holy Spirit. Now, God the Father, we talk to God the Father, we pray to God the Father, and we'll pray. We'll say, God, I pray. But, you know, Jesus said there's a better way to pray even. You can call him Abba. Do you know what Abba means? Father. Daddy. You know what I'm talking about. Some of you high school girls know what I'm talking about. You're like, Daddy? You know, can I? You know, and, and because you're... He loves you so much, and, and, and you're wrapped around his finger, man, or he's got you wrapped around your finger, and, and he just cares about you so much. That's, that's how our Father God cares about us. So in other words, when you pray, don't pray to a disconnected, just a creator. You don't, we don't just pray to just an all-powerful God, which we do, but when we're talking to him, we're actually talking to daddy. Can you... Can you can, can you marinate in that just for a minute? Can you absorb that into your spiritual life? That you have a heavenly father. And for some of us, it's a rub. It's, it's a grind. And we just can't connect the two because we're like, no, 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 no. My father wasn't like that. He would get upset. He'd get frustrated easily with me if I went to him. If I needed his help, he, he, dad, no, 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 no. And, and, and it's, it's hard for you to do that. But, but that was your earthly father. And we have a heavenly father. So, so. Daddy, Abba Father, who loves you more than you can. I mean, he loves you so much he allowed his son to be murdered so you and I could go free. You with me? Something about being punished when you did something. But then there's something about being punished when you're innocent. Our friend Sean is here today. Sean just got out March 1st, got out of Blackwater. Sean, where are you at? Would you stand up real quick? I want to recognize him real quick right there. Good to have you, man. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much, man. We prayed. You can be seated, but we prayed over Sean. We believed with Sean. Sean told us, I'm in here, and I don't deserve to be in here. And so he was sentenced for 20-something years, 20 years. Is that right? 20? The big 2 oh, 20 years, and was in there for what, Sean? Four years? Four years, seven months. He knows the day. And uh, they just redid his case, and the truth came out. He is innocent. So he's a new man. He's free. And, and I mean this with all my heart when I say this, Sean, but to God be the glory. But he said, he said, you know what? Coming to momentum changed my life. Isn't that holy? How about that, Blackwater? Isn't that awesome? Y'all keep praying. Some of y'all keep praying. That's right. So he's just talking about having... You know, what was it today? What, what was it that you drank? Iced coffee. Yeah, that was it. That sums it up right there. Oh, my gosh. He was like, this is, he's like, I knew I'm free, man. I mean, right? Like tasting that. And, uh, yeah, so I just wanted to shout out and just, just um, 
It's just that's super awesome. I, I, I love that. Thank you, man. Thank you. We're made for relationship. And, 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 and God, God allowed his son to be punished for something he didn't do so he could have a relationship with you. That's how good he is. So when we think about God, he, he loves us, okay? So, so God said, Jesus, Holy Spirit, Father, God is sitting there, and they're all talking. They're like, what are you thinking? What are you, what are you thinking? Holy Spirit's like, man, I got an idea. And Jesus is like, I like that idea. Tell me what is that idea. Father God's like, come on, let's hear it. And, and, it's like, and they're all talking. They're in relationship with each other. They're in agreement. Relationships are never better than when you're on the same page. It's hard to walk down a road if you're not agreed. Mm, yes, I'm going to preach a message on that, but that's for another week. I'm going to keep going. So then God says this. He says, they will reign over the fish in the sea. If you're an angler, you got to say amen to that one. Reign over. You know what that means? That means you're reigning over and you're putting them in the boat. So you can put them on the grill. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image in the image of god he created them male and female he created them now god's not a man or a woman god is god but in male and female we have the attributes of god let me let me describe it to you like this mamas who do your babies ask for when they get hurt mama or daddy mama, mama. most of the time right most of the time right like, mom and daddy's there with our kids, you know. Most of the time, it's like, mama, you know. And mama, they cry for mama. Why? Because mamas, they, they know how to nurture, right? They know how to nurture, you know. It's just one drop of blood, you know. And as dads, we're like, lick it. <laughs> it's just one drop, right? And mama's like, oh, baby, it's okay. Oh, sweetie, precious, you know. And we're like, don't do that. I want our boy to be a warrior, you know. Mama's got this nurturing thing in them. We're like, who cares he broke his finger and the bone sticking out? He's got nine more. Get back in the game. Right, 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 right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So in the image of God, there are characteristics that a man has. There are qualities, attributes. There are attributes and qualities and characteristics that mom have. And when you put the two together, we get a picture of what God has. Does that make sense? I watched a movie called The Shack. And while everyone was, um, everyone was uh, judging the movie, I was watching the movie. I just want to be known for what I'm known for. What I'm for instead of what I'm for, or what I'm against. I'm watching that movie, and what that movie did, that movie isn't the Bible, but that movie helped me understand the Bible, and it really helped me understand the different characteristics of God. And it stretched me. It stretched me at first, the first time I watched it, but it was good, man. How many know it's good to stretch? It's good to stretch, man. If you can't stretch, <laughs> you're stiff. So, so. I watched that, and it helped me. So here's God. God is a relational God, and God has made us for a relationship. God made you for a relationship. Then God blessed them. That's what God did. The first thing God did after he made them is he blessed them. God's for you. He's not against you. He's not mad at you. He's madly in love with you. The first thing God does is he blesses them with sex. That's what he does. You think I'm lying. You think I just went off the grid? No, it's right here. He blesses them, and then he says, be fruitful and multiply. Do you know what that means? Go have sex. <laughs> That's what it means. Fill the earth. How do you fill the earth? You have sex. You have babies. That's how you do it. If you're in here with young kids, that's why we have kid, momentum kids. <laughs> That's why we have environments designed for your kids. But you know what? The world's talking about it. And the truth is your kids probably know a lot more about it than you think. In fact, that your kids might be able to teach you something. <laughs> Fifteen years, student pastor. I know what I'm talking about. By the time dad sits down to nervously say, son, we've got to have the talk. Oh, Jesus, help me. <laughs> he, he already knows. Don't wait too long. 
Then God bless them. Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. By the way, a couple weeks ago, I talked about the Tower of Babel, Tower of Babel. I talked about that. Remember, and in their disobedience and the hardness of heart, they did not want to obey God. God said, be fruitful, multiply. And then he said, fill the earth. That meant he was saying, spread out. I've created all this for you. Spread out and rule it. You see, history is really just a story of men and, and women wanting to rule each other. God created us to rule over the animals. God created us to love each other. But history is just a, a long, continuous repeat of someone trying to rule over somebody else. Hmm. That'll preach. I'm sitting down. That will preach. And so Tower of Babel, they're like, we're not going to fill the earth. We're staying right here, baby. Tower of power. We're raising this thing to the sky. We're going to walk right into heaven and be like, booyah, what's up? That's what they were going to do. And God's like, no, no, no. So I'm going to allow confusion to mess with you. And, and here's what I know. Genesis 1 really lays out the purpose and design of God. And when we ignore, reject, refuse, mute, I'm not listening. When we do that to the words of God, we find ourselves empty of the wisdom of God. God never does anything on accident. God does everything on purpose. God is purpose-driven. God never just sets out, you know, God never is like, I don't know where we're going. Let's just get in the car and drive. No, God always has a purpose. And so he says, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and govern it. Reign over the fish of the sea. That's twice. The birds in the sky, all the animals that scurry along the ground. Then God looked over all that he made, and he saw that it was very good. Now, let's not just... Miss this. This is on the sixth day. God is creating human beings. Are you with me? Watch this now. God on day one, um, evening, uh, evening and morning were the first day. God said it's good. Second day, good. Third day, everything he made, good. Um, fourth day, good. Fifth day, he said it's good. But for the first time, we read these two words, very good. After he made Adam and Eve, after he created man, what am I saying? What I'm saying is that very good means, it means this. It means abundantly excellent. What God was saying is everything is perfect now. Everything is in place. Nothing is missing. This is abundantly perfect. Kind of like how you think you would feel if you won the lottery. You won $570 million. You would say this is abundantly perfect. Right? That's what God said. It's very good. This was the climax of his creation. He made man, and now we see woman. You see, we crave community. We crave connection. We crave communication. And Adam, at this point now, Adam, God's made all this stuff, but Adam doesn't have a help meet. He's got the animals, and, and we say, you know, dog is a man's best friend. I love, I'm a dog guy. We're dog people. We, we got Coco. She's an 85-pound Rottweiler. It's our fourth or fifth Rottweiler. We love, love those dogs. Um, we're dog people. How many of you are dog people? God bless you. Lord, just bless these people today. How many of you are cat people? Raise your hand. Let me pray for y'all. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. I'm just joking with you. But you know what we say? A dog is man's best friend. But Adam had all these animals. They're dinosaurs. They're dogs. They're all cut butterflies. He had all these animals. And something was still missing. Something was still missing. And so here we go. Genesis 2. I'm going to read a few verses here. Verse 7. Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. Can I just say here, let's not forget where we were where we started, we came from dust. And maybe you're here right now and this, this series is going to speak to you wherever you are. It's going to connect with you because we all struggle with relationships. And what I know is there's some people here and, and you are married and, and you are miserable. There's some of you here and, and uh, you, you're, you're living together. You're not married and, and you just think that, that it's, it's, she's the right one and he's the right one. And you know this because the sex is great. And you got the chemistry thing down, but, but you've gone through a whole lot of guys in your life. You've gone through a whole bunch of girls in your life because it's more than sex. It's about a relationship. And so maybe, maybe you're struggling there. Maybe, maybe you're here today and you're like, you're like man, I, I just I hope to one day have that person that God would have for me. Well, watch this. God cares. He cares so much 
that he takes the dust to the ground. And, and, and that dust represents sometimes that our marriages are crap. Um, maybe you're going through a bad place. And, and can I just say to you, it's a season. Can I just say it's turbulence. Don't jump out of the plane. You just hit turbulence. Remember your promise. You said forever and until death. You said until death and forever I will. Maybe you're here and, and you thought you were with the love of your life. Only to find out, like someone that Steph and I love very dearly, who's a, a, a relative of ours, that, that it was all built on a lie. And it was affair after affair after affair, and adultery after adultery. Are you with me? Prostitutes, prostitutes. I mean, it doesn't matter how much money you have, right? I mean, we're recently reminded of that. And so maybe you're here and it's just dust. Can I tell you this? God knows how to take dust. And God knows how to breathe the very life of God, the very breath of God into it. And God knows how to take what was once dirt and breathe life into it and make man a living soul. God knows how low your marriage might be. And God knows how to breathe his breath into your marriage. Maybe you decided to stick around with that person that hurt you so bad. Said they wouldn't, but they did. Said they didn't, but they did. God knows how to make beautiful things out of the dust. I think there's a song on that. And so that just encourages me here today. But, but he takes the dust and he, he forms. He forms man. He breathes. And man becomes a living person. The King James, I love it. It says a living soul. You don't have a soul. You are a soul. Verse 18, then the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. Isn't that right, women? I mean, God could have made just all men. I'm glad he didn't. Oh, you know, I mean, men, you know, we're just like, we're just like boys at heart. We're like grown up boys, right? I'm not dissing on the men, but I mean, we like to have fun. I mean, Gavin yesterday... Steph and the kids, I'm, I'm in the office studying for today, and, and they're uh, washing the expedition and, and vacuuming it and doing all that fun stuff. Kids helping out. It's good. Get your kids to work. It's a good thing, and they're out there doing that, and Gavin gets the hose. He gets the hose, and he's trying to soak his brother Jaden. And, uh, I mean, this hose is awesome, man. This, this, we got nine settings on this thing, you know? And he's like, <laughs> he's trying to spray Jaden, you know? And he's hitting everything in the garage because the garage door is up. He's not hitting Jaden. He's hitting everything in the garage. He just had, oh, you know, and men, we're just kind of like that. You know, we're like, hey, buddy, what are you doing? I've got a water hose with nine settings. <laughs> not seven, but nine. Who can we so, right, right, right? I mean, God could have just made men, but he did. God could have just made women. God knew better than that. They talk about them cat fights. <laughs> you know, he could have just made, but he didn't. God made man and woman. You know why? Because we need each other. We need each other. He says, it's not good for man to be alone. I'll make a helper who is just right for him. So the Lord God formed from the ground all the wild animals, all the birds of the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he'd call them. And the man chose a name for each one. Adam gave names to all the livestock. Cow. Ow. He gives them all the names. He gave names to all the livestock, all the birds of the sky, all the wild animals, but still there was no helper just right for him. And you see in all these animals, male animals got a female animal, and they look like they're having fun. And Adam's like, what's up with me? And he got all these animals, this is, this is, but something was missing. There still was no helper just right for him. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. While the man slept, the Lord God took out one of the man's ribs and he closed up the opening. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib and he brought her to the man. See, God took the rib out so that we would be, we would be close. We'd be side to side. We need each other. And chest to chest. God knew we needed each other. We're going to fill the earth. So he took it out of that side, which represents when you're beside someone, you're with someone, you're close to somebody. God said, this help me is to be close to you. You're to be close to her. And, and, 
And so God does that. And then verse 23, Adam says, at last. He says, at last. Woohoo! I mean, I heard one preacher said, he was like, whoa, oh God, whoa, man, man, look at that. He sees woman for the first time. She's naked. He had never seen anything like that. And men have been captured ever since. Because the truth is, I'm just going to go there for a minute. There's nothing more powerful than a beautiful woman. So Adam is like, thank you, God, 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 thank you, God. Thank you, God. And he sees, he sees her. And he says, this one is bone from my bone and flesh from my flesh. She will be called woman because she was taken from the man. From man, not from the man. <laughs> She'll be called woman because she's taken from the man. No, from man. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother. And maybe you're here today, and the reason why your marriage is not doing good, you've been married seven years, but you never cut the cord. You're trying to do life together, and you're still attached to mama. <laughs> Somebody call me a taxi. <laughs> and and the, that's, the, that's what's going on. How about that, Matt? That just happened. I might even do it again. Somebody call me a taxi. Or an Uber. <laughs> and the, the problem is, is your wife is still connected to mama. Or the husband, <laughs> it's like everyone loves Raymond. <laughs> mom's always there. <laughs> you know, good news, mom's alive. Bad news, she's always there. You know? and, and, and so this gives us great wisdom. And it says this is why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined joined to his wife and the two are united in one and you know how that happens in God's eyes it happens immediately at that marriage it happens it's like duct tape if you if you take a strip of duct tape and then you put it together it's kind of hard to undo it isn't it and that's how God sees marriage spiritually you become one and then it gets real complicated when you try to take it apart because it's become one but if we can say humanly speaking uh, it t sometimes takes a lifetime to become one. In God's eyes, we're one, you know, and we think we're one until we start fighting over the toilet paper. Over, under, over, under, you know? Like, we think we love her. She's perfect until she slurps her soup. We're like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, we think they're all perfect. No, no, no. United into one. Now, the man and his wife were both, someone say naked. naked. Oh, my gosh, we're talking about sex in church. A church needs to be talking about sex because we watch it. It's on there. It's everywhere we go, we turn. The church better talk about it. In this series, we're going to talk about sex. We're going to talk about it. They're both naked. I, I, I don't think that's just talking about physically naked because they hadn't thought about fig leaves yet. But I think they were, I think this is talking about something deeper, intimacy. And that is at the heart of what every person in here desires that's what they experience. Watch me. I'm not talking about sex. I'm talking about intimacy. That's what they experienced with God. God walked with them in the Garden of Eden. He walked with them and he talked with them. There was communion. There was communication. It flowed. There was laughter. There was backslapping. I mean, like, <laughs> like God was like, Adam, that's hilarious. And Adam's like, God, you rock. That is so awesome. Look at her body. She's naked. God's like, I know. Y'all think I'm exaggerating, but I'm not. That's what the garden of Eden. They walk and they talk together. And, what, and God made you and me to crave that thing called intimacy. And what's gone wrong is we've substituted sex for something way better. Now, I'm all for sex. But there's something way better than that. And God had it, and then they lost it. Because they disobeyed in the Garden of Eden, and, and, and we've been longing for it ever since. We, we, we live in a day and age where we are so connected. We can talk to someone we've never met anywhere in the world. You hear me? It's true, isn't it? We can see instantly what's happening. And yet the truth is loneliness, suicide, depression is at an all-time high. Why is that? Because... Maybe we've got what we wanted. 
but we lost what we had. And God knows there's something better. It goes on to say this, and I, I, I close. It goes on to tell us the man, the woman, the other verses we read. He makes them male and female. He created them. Listen, we, 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 live, we live in a day and age where wrong is right and right is wrong. We live in a day and an age where common sense isn't that common anymore. You with me? I mean, I heard about, I heard about a child who was trying to sue her parents or his parents, whichever one it was, because the parents didn't, <laughs> didn't ask the child what sex they wanted to be. That's stupid. Not stupid. That's stupid. That's cray cray. What's even more cray cray is the fact that we would entertain that. I mean, my grandma wouldn't put up with that. You know what I'm talking about? Grandma would have been like, what's wrong with you, child? You know what I'm talking about? Y'all looking nervous now. Don't look nervous. Y'all know what I'm talking about. We live in a day and age, and I don't say this with hate in my heart. I don't say it, but we live in a day and age where, man, people are struggling. They don't even know their own identity. And what's happened is we've ignored the word of God, so we never followed the ways of God, and we landed in a spot where we don't have the wisdom of God. And we're wondering why girls think they're boys and boys think they're girls, and they're not sure what they're, I'm telling you, listen to me, I'm not being ugly. God loves people. But if I can be honest with you, I think it, it breaks the very heart of God. Because male and female, he created them. God was purpose-driven, and God had a plan, and God executed that plan. And that's how you and I got here. And we live in a day and age where the enemy does to us what he did to Adam and Eve. And he said, did God say, did God say, no, nah, no, nah. God's holding back from you. There's something you don't know. There's something God that you can't trust authority. You can't trust God. God, no, 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 God, I know, I know God said sex is for marriage, but come on, man, do you buy a car without test driving it? Like, come on, man, do you, you, you buy a pair of shoes without trying them out? Like, come on, man, that was so a long time ago, this is 2019, man, come on, and what happens if you and I are not careful? We ignore, we refuse the word of God, so we don't walk the ways of God, we find ourselves in a place, relationally. Where, as a pastor, I hear the story and I think, oh my gosh. Oh, Jesus, only you can fix this. Like, are you kidding me? Like, couples or friends and thought it would be okay to, to sleep with each other. You know, this husband with his wife and this wife with, like, right? That's like where it is today. So in this series... We're just going to unpack it. And I want you to commit to coming. Because I promise you, this foundation that God made us for a, a relationship plays out. And, and here's what I promise you to be true. And I, I'll talk more about this next week. But if you're not careful, what we're going to find, if you're not careful, we will find out that our past follows us. And our past becomes our present and if we don't deal with it you know I've been married four times you know and if I could just find the right woman you know it would work out no maybe maybe, maybe we need to look in the mirror some all of us how many know you have an issue <laughs> you know you got an issue I got an issue we all got issues and if you don't know that you're the person I'm talking to it's called denial right mm-hmm we're not careful. Our past becomes our present, and it will follow us into our future. So we got to work on this relationship thing. Next week, I want you to come back. I want you to be here every week, every week, every week, and we're going to talk. I mean, we're going to talk about whether you're single, if you're dating. We're going to talk about, man, if you're married, if you're married with kids, if you're married without kids, if you're empty nester, the principles in this series will literally make your life better because they will make your relationships better. And you and I both know that our lives are only as good as our relationships. Let's pray.
Jesus, we love you. And we thank you for your word. Thank you for the foundation. Thank you for the beginning that we were able to go back to today to just see your purpose and, 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 and your ways, Lord, because they work. Your, your word is truth, and it works. And when we align our thinking with yours, God, um, you're the creator, you're the designer, and you know. And so, Lord, I just, I honestly, I, I pray for all of us, God, because we all in, everyone in here today, everyone watching online, God, we have a relationship somewhere that's broken. And we think if we just ignore it, we think if we just forget about it, if we just let it go, all the other relationships in our life can be good, Lord, but, but it doesn't work that way. So, so lead me, I pray in this series, Holy Spirit, flow through me, speak through me, God. I, I, I'm not here to impress people. I'm not here to be liked. I'm here to help people. Because Jesus, you are life and you make us better at life. And I believe I speak for all of us, Lord, when I say we want to be better at life. So teach us, I pray. If you're here today, I, I just want to challenge you. I want to ask you. I want, I want to ask you. I want you to raise your hand if you'll commit to it. I want to ask you to commit, number one, to coming the entire series. As a pastor, it's that parade, right? So instead of coming one time a month, or no, no, no. I want you to come next week. We'll be right here. Three weeks from now, we'll be right here. Lord willing, the end of this series, we'll be right here. I want you to come back. I want you to come back. If you'll do that, I want you to raise your hand. Would you do that? I want you to hold it up high. I'll come back. I'm going to commit to the series. Keep it up. Hold it up high. Don't. All right. If, if, if you're traveling, you can raise your hand. If you'll commit to go back and watch it, you'll watch it. Go ahead and raise a hand up. There you go. There you go. If now, I think that's for everyone now. If, if there's someone beside you, their hand's not in the air, just go ahead and help them. Just grab their hand and raise it. Hold it up by faith that you know their heart. You're judging their heart is good. They're going to come. You can put your hands down. One more question. I want you to commit to bringing someone because it's complicated. It's complicated. Relationships get so messy. And we all have someone who's so close to us and so far from God. Maybe one time they weren't, but they are now because of the mess, whatever it is. We all know someone like that. This series will help them. I want to ask you to commit. If you'll commit to do your... Not I'm going to try. Try never did nothing. We do it or we don't. So if you'll say, I will invite people to come with me every week. I'll invite people to come with me. And, and God will, God does the rest. You just invite them. You plant the seed. God's the Lord of the harvest. If you say, I'm going to do that. I'll invite people to this series. Would you raise your hand? Come on, hold it up. Gulf Breeze, Navarre, hold it up. Come on, Blackwater. You got guys in there in the prison. You know need this. Hold it up. The, the fact that they're so bitter and they're so angry is because of this, what we're talking about. That's right. And you're watching online. You can tell someone to watch online. I appreciate that so much. Thank you. You put your hands down. Heads bowed and eyes closed. I, I want to explain the gospel in about 90 seconds. And that is this. You know, what broke, what broke our connection with God was sin. God put Adam and Eve in that garden. He said, hey, there are two trees right here in the middle. It's a tree of knowledge of good and evil. There's a tree of life. Don't touch the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You can eat any other fruit tree. Knock yourself out. Don't touch the one. It'll mess you up. You'll surely die. The devil tricked him, deceived him. The devil lied, said God is lying. Really, it was the devil lying. They disobeyed God. They got what they wanted. They lost what they had. They got to taste the fruit, but their eyes were open. Sin entered the world, and because the door of sin was open, death came in behind. And that's why all of us, all of us have a day where we'll pass from this life to the next because the punishment of sin is death. So because we're sinners, there's not a person that can out-talk death, hide from death, escape death. Death is inevitable. And God knows that if we die in our sins, we spend in eternity in our sins and eternity is a really long long time and God didn't want that so God did the unimaginable the unthinkable he allowed his son who never sinned he allowed his son Jesus to come to earth live a perfect life die a perfect death and he allowed his son to pay for your sins and my sins and on that cross Jesus became every sin that ever existed and God punished him completely 
He paid the full penalty of the world's sin. And he did it so that you and I could be forgiven because it would only be the blood of the precious Lamb of God that could take away the sin of the world. And then we read in the New Testament that if we will just confess that we're a sinner, that means we come into agreement with God that we need a Savior because we're a sinner. And if we'll confess with our mouth that we're sinners, if we'll believe in our heart that God raised Him from the dead, we will be saved. That word saved means forgiven. It means all your sins are gone. Your past, your present, your future. God deletes the account. He deletes the sin count. He, he, he pays off your sin mortgage and you are free. You are set free. The doors of the prison of sin are open and we walk out being made free. And all we have to do is not just say a few words, but it's we transfer our trust in what we do, what we say, what we believe, where we go to church, how many good things we've done, into us trying to clean ourselves up to saying, God, we can't. We're so dirty. We're so filthy. And we need you. And we need you to come in and forgive us. And if you'll do that, and you'll transfer your trust from the good things you've done to the the great thing that he did, you'll be saved. So I'm going to lead us in a prayer. You can repeat these words after me. We'll all do it together because there will be people in this room, people in Navarre, people watching online, and people in Blackwater that will say this prayer for the first time, and they'll receive Jesus for the first time. So we want to pray it together. And if I may just add, you're not praying to me. You're not praying through me. I'm, I'm not... You don't have to pray through me to get to God. Jesus is the high priest. We go through Jesus. He's the mediator. There's only one mediator between God and man. That's the man Christ Jesus. So we're going straight to him. I've just got the microphone. I'm going to lead us. You pray after me. Here we go. Ready? Jesus, I admit to you. Everyone do this now. Jesus, I admit to you. That's right. Pray it out loud. I'm a sinner. You've known all my sins. You've seen them all. And I'm guilty. I need a Savior. Today I feel your love. And I receive your love. Thank you for dying for me. And I believe you rose again. So today, I give you my life. I receive your life. Now teach me how to live. In Jesus' name. Everyone look up. Every campus, look right up here. In just a minute, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if you prayed that for the first time. And and here's why. It's because we have hosts around that they have a bag. And in that bag, it's like a toolbox. Um, There's some resources in there that will help you. Kind of like a new baby's born. Then there's some steps to take. This, this, This bag has some great resources that will help you in your journey of faith. So we're not trying to embarrass you. We want to celebrate with you. That's why we do this, this moment. You saying yes to Christ is the reason we exist. It's to lead people to passionately follow Jesus. So we ask, all we ask is that you raise your hand. Raising your hand doesn't make you right with God. You putting your trust in Christ alone does. But you raising your hand allows us to give you those resources, allows us to celebrate And uh, heaven already saw, heaven's already celebrating. We want to join in. Would you help us? On the count of three, you raise your hand up high. Hold it up. We'll get that bag to you. On the count of three, one, two, three. Right now, hold it up, would you? Hold it up so good. I see a hand right there. Yes. Yes, so good. Come on.